Today, the contents of the water molecule are pretty much common knowledge. But two centuries ago, that molecule looked very different. And even longer ago, it was a fundamental substance of the universe. So, how did water become H2O? Hi, I'm Ever, and this is Minute Earth. In ancient times, people thought water was an element, one of the basic building blocks of the universe. Their understanding was that because water was an element, it couldn't be split apart any further and couldn't be created from simpler substances. However, in the early 1780s, chemists started to notice that when they burned a certain peculiar gas, it produced a lot of water. But was this water really being created by the combustion? Or was it just coming from the moisture in the open air? To answer this question, chemists built an airtight vessel sealed away from the atmosphere and pumped in their peculiar gas. But it didn't burn on its own. That's because in order for fire to happen, another gas is needed. So they placed both gases inside the vessel and, sure enough, when the mixture was ignited, the fire only produced water. A lot of it. They were able to show that you can combine simple substances to create water, revealing that water is not an element after all. And not only that, chemists also discovered ways to break water apart. The simplest method is a process known as electrolysis. Electrolysis uses an electric current to split water into two distinct gases, the very same gases that make water. These building blocks of water, which we now know as hydrogen and oxygen, were pretty clear by 1808, when one of the fathers of chemistry, John Dalton, made the very first drawing of the water molecule, a hydrogen atom combined with an oxygen atom, or HO. Of course, this is wrong, but don't blame Dalton, he didn't have all the information yet. Every experiment had confirmed that water was made of exactly two volumes of hydrogen for every one volume of oxygen. And while this seems to indicate that water is H2O, it doesn't quite prove it. That's because they were working with volumes of gas, and back then they had no way of knowing how many atoms each volume has. For example, it could be that a volume of oxygen had twice as many atoms as a volume of hydrogen, which would lead to a one-to-one -one ratio of atoms. An Italian chemist, though, made a major breakthrough when he figured out that equal volumes of different gases have the same number of atoms. Well, not atoms, but molecules. It turns out that both hydrogen and oxygen were themselves molecules consisting of two atoms each, but fortunately that doesn't change the ratios. With this, we know that one volume of hydrogen has the same number of molecules as one volume of oxygen. That's how we figured out that two molecules of hydrogen could combine with one molecule of oxygen to form two molecules of water. Finally, the water molecule is made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, or H2O. Today, it might seem like a very simple fact, but solving the mystery of water composition required a lot of hard work from the greatest chemists in the world. And that makes me go H2O. By the way, did you notice how we kept using these symbols for hydrogen and oxygen? They come from Dalton's new system of chemical philosophy, the book that contains the very first drawings of atoms and molecules. Of course, we don't use these anymore. We have lots of more precise and fancier symbols and models. You can actually learn everything about those new symbols and models and why they are so diverse in a wonderful course we made on Brilliant, the sponsor of this video and the must-go place for learning math, science and computer science interactively. By going to brilliant.org slash minuteearth, you can enjoy this course and many, many others. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash minuteearth or click in the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant!